Hi, I'm Don Goddard, the, one of the co-chairmen of the Senior Green Twig, along with Herb Tanzer. Um, we'll be talking about the uh, changes in the taxonomy and how it affects energy star testing and the concept of a hybrid uh, system which was not which was not in the emerald v3.0.3 version so let's go to the next slide so what we've done is we've made some broad changes in the taxonomy uh, based on some access types uh, it's the uh, we created something called sets a taxonomy set is Define broad groupings of storage products that share similar characteristics. Products in different sets are generally not comparable in performance or power efficiency characteristics. So uh, we've set the sets into disk access, uh, which is uh, spinning media by, uh, sets, RVML, which, remo which is removable, and virtual media libraries, and NVSS, which is non-volatile solid-state storage uh, types of products. So the next slide, we'll break it down a little bit better. So, in the categories, in in the sets of disk, we have two categories of disk. There's the online category and the near online category. This refers to the access time for the various types of systems. Online has a, uh, we'll show in the next slide what that means, but online is the uh, immediately accessible. Near online is not as, ex is accessible, but not nearly as quickly. Removable media library uh, and removable and virtual media libraries consist of removable media libraries, which tend to be tape or, or disk, uh, tape or uh, optical disk and virtual media libraries, both of which tend to have much slower access times. And then the NVSS, the non-volatile solid state. And as it turns out, in the non-volatile solid state area, there are two types of systems. There are those that use disk access methodologies and those that are using direct memory access. So let's go on to the next slide to get a little bit more detail on it. So in the in the disk set, online is random or sequential. It's less than 80 millisecond uh, maximum time to first data. It's typically mag it is a, is magnetic disk, and its access paradigms are block, file, or object. Near online is uh, random or is both random or sequential, but again, in this case, it's greater than 80 millisecond. It's magnetic disk. Uh, this could include things that go into modified spin down or complete spin down, as long as they can be brought back up in less in in, in the amount of, in the required amount of time. Typically, magnetic disk. Uh, they have both block file and object storage capabilities as well. In the removable and virtual media libraries, there's a removable media, which is typically magnetic tape or optical disk. It's um, Access is block and it is sequential. It's basically a sequential read, sequential write. Uh, the virtual media is a much greater access time. It's less than 80 milliseconds. Uh, this is the virtual media libraries. It uses magnetic disk or solid state storage and is block access. And again, this is sequential access, but it's just higher, higher access speed. In the non-volatile solid state area, the disk access, which is random or sequential, it's less than 80 millisecond access, max time of the first data. It consists of solid state storage or, op, or optionally solid state storage mixed with magnetic disk. When you mix a solid state storage with magnetic disk, that's what we're, what's being called a hybrid solid state storage system which is a hybrid of solid state and magnetic disk. And that's one option in the disk access is to have a, that's where, that's where a hybrid system would be classified. And I'll go into a little more detail on the testing of that later. Uh, but it's block, file, and object storage. 
And in memory access, again, it's, it's random access, just like it's, me it's memory. It uses memory access uh, paradigms and it's uh, solid state storage. And the next slide. So this is, gives a little bit of information on this hybrid testing category for ENERGY STAR. NBSS set, disk access category, also includes the hybrid system. The hybrid system is one that contains both spinning media drives and solid state drives. ENERGY STAR allows a hybrid system to be tested as NBSS disk access, but it has a restriction on the amount of solid state when you're testing a hybrid system. When you're testing a hybrid system, the maximum allowable addressable space is 30% in solid state and the balance has to be in spinning media. It can be more, it can be less solid state, but it can't be any more than 30%. This allows a certified system family to include any amount of solid state storage and be considered as part of the certified product. So if you have a hybrid family, that is got solid state and and spinning media. You can test it as a solid as as this hybrid system with the solid state up to 30% addressable space when you're doing the testing, and then any amount of solid state in the system when you sell it will be covered. Now, if the fam if the system family is all solid state or all spinning media, it does not fall under the hybrid testing rules. So if you have a family that's all solid state, you just test it as all solid state. If it's spinning media, you test it as spinning media only. Only when you when you have a, a hybrid family would you be doing the mixed testing where, again, there's a restriction on the amount of solid state when you're doing the testing. And this goes into a little bit more detail on the taxonomy classifications. Um, and one note here is we've added a, a category called 1.5, which is the JBOD category, as opposed to the low-end system, which is the online two system. There's a reason for this distinction. In Energy Star, an online two system requires that it have a COM and that it has data protection. A dumb JBOD would have neither of those. But in the EU, in their ERP regulation, they require JBODs to be tested as to be considered part of a storage system. So a JBOD for them would be would be one of these dumb JBODs that doesn't have an, a controller in it. So we've made that distinction between the two consumer products. <laughs> the online one category is not used in any of these because it's it's consumer, and we don't do any testing. Uh, capabilities for consumer products uh, for and in, and then in the, in the mid range you'll notice that there's only that the, we've shaded out the near online four we actually only have a near online three category near online four is not defined and there's no test methodology for it. it's just a non it's just a, a, a space holder here in the table same in the removable media and the virtual media. Um, for removable media, we have, you can see there's you know, just categories one, two, three, five, and six. Same with virtual media. In the disk access, NBSS, there's online 1.5 through online six. And in the memory access, we've left that. Those are categories that we think we'll, we suspect will be there. But for the purpose of Emerald, we were not able to define a test methodology for memory access. So for memory access and BSS systems, there is no methodology for testing it in the uh, Emerald test, and there is no test methodology for it in the Energy Star version 2. It's a, new it's a relatively new category, and we expect that we will get more data on it later, but we just don't know what the test methodology, there's not a defined test methodology for it at this time. Now, for, other than to say, for further details, you can go to the, refer to the taxonomy in Emerald 4.0 for more, for more details, but this is just a simple overview. Um, are there any questions?
Don, in, in, in our conversations with the EPA, why didn't we choose a solid state system that could have a higher percentage of solid state in the hybrid system? Uh, that was a decision that uh, we we actually discussed this with the Energy Star program, and they chose to uh, they didn't want to have a, a hybrid system that would be part solid state and part um, spinning media tested as all solid state. So they wanted to limit the amount of solid state in it so that it wasn't completely biased in its test results, but that it actually showed a hybrid test um, methodology in it. And 30% was a number they chose. Uh, we thought that they originally thought about doing 20%, but we talked to it, we discussed it at length and decided 30% was a more representative uh, ratio for the for the purpose of testing. It does allow the uh, the hot band testing to uh, take advantage of the solid state when it's doing the testing for the most part, although it does test the spinning media as part of that as well. Okay, I, I thought some of the folks might find that interesting to say yeah. why these numbers are being decided on and why not a different number. Yeah, the 30% uh, is actually uh, a pretty reasonable ratio. It uh, it gives a it allows the bulk of the hot band testing to be utilizing the solid state, but it's still but not all of it's in the solid state. You wanted to still be sure you were testing the spinning media at the same time, so that uh, will have an influence on your final score. So Don, this is Ricardo. Uh, just a, a quick question, maybe a dumb question, uh, but uh, how would you ca categorize the, those systems that have uh, uh, hi it's a hybrid system but with more solid state, let's say 40%? How would you test that? Uh, you'd have to test it at 30%, but then it, once you once you test it at 30%, it can have any percentage of solid state it wants as part of the family. But you'd have to reduce it to 30% for the test purposes. Okay, got it. So yeah, you know, if, if you're normally selling at 40 to 50%, you'd still have to reduce it down to 30% when you're testing it. But then you can still sell it with 40, 50, 60, 70%, uh, whatever percentage makes most sense for the system, and that allows you to have a wider range in the family. Thank you, then. And uh, just an additional question on the on the table that you presented. Uh, th there were several uh, cells on that table that were gray. gray. Uh, but does that mean that there's no uh, testing um, methodology for those? Uh -uh. Okay, yeah, I'll go. The, so in the uh, in uh, for I'll go through each one. For online online one, there's no test methodology for online one. That's a consumer product, like the little drive that you you know, like those little USB drives, et, et cetera. For near online, uh, we never defined a. Uh, we didn't put, develop a test methodology for that either, because again, that's a similar consideration. It's meant for consumer only. Uh, for the near online 1.5, um, we didn't think that uh, for near online 5, there really isn't a JBOD. If you have a JBOD, it'll be an online JBOD. So we didn't define define a near online JBOD. Um, for removable, uh, again, there's no uh, there's no real there's no JBOD in removable media or virtual media. A JBOD would be the online 1.5 JBOD, which would be used for a virtual media library. So if you're using a JBOD, it would just be a straight JBOD. And again, in the case of the online one for the MDSS, so again, that's consumer products. We don't define any test methodologies for that. And for memory access, we have no test methodology for any of the memory access versions. So basically, the grayed out ones are either, they're either there's, the, the classification is not defined or there's no test methodology for it. Got it. Thank you. Make sense? In the, yeah. So over time, as system architectures continually change, you'll, we'll see more and more on MDSS in terms of maybe what the what the percentage would be, as well as uh, you know we expect 
you know, 10 years from now, I'm just put the stake out in the future just for the sake of uh, the conversation, is that there would also be memory access testing. Uh, since some of the technology is so new, it's um, in different architectures and physical implementations are in place, which it, it takes a while for the industry to look at the pros and cons of different uh, techniques before finding something that would be an unbiased test versus a, a vendor specific yep. way of measuring it. And, and the other thing, and, and, and part of the impetus for moving to the NBSS category and the disk access especially is that, uh, as the industry has probably noticed, the uh, 15K RPM drives are rapidly disappearing uh, because the solid state has become much more cost effective than the spinning media at 15K. And solid state has become about comparable in cost to spinning media at 10K. So moving forward, we expect that uh, by and large, um, 15K, 10K and 15K drives will be replaced by all solid state systems in the future. And the uh, only the 7.2K RPM drives, the high capacity, uh, low performance drives, will be uh, what will be used in the online, and that'll be primarily in sequential rather than in transactional -like systems. That's the way we see this, this, the trend in the industry moving. So we expect that to be the, the, the trend in the future as well, that eventually there will be no 10K or 15K RPM drives. Just solid state and uh, 7.2K RPM drives. Any questions on anything that was covered today? Yeah, and I believe uh, there's, if you go back to one of Dave's presentations, there's a um, an emerald email. That if you have any questions that, that come up after, after you get a chance to review all this, there's an emerald. You can just do emerald email. that. Emerald at SNEA.org or emerald-training at SNEA.org. Uh, both will get it to Dave. And then Dave will get it out to the right people to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank everyone for your time today, and we will conclude oh, the session. Yeah, yeah. Dave just put the uh, email in the chat. So emerald at SNEA.org. So, yeah, any questions that come up, for my presentation, Dave's presentations, or any of the other presentations, send the questions to emerald.snea.org and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Nice job, presenters. Nice work. Thank you. Thanks.